What's up guys, I'm gonna show you today how I made a beat with the Complete Control A25. Let's check out the beat. This is probably one of my favorite beats that I've made, not just because it got so much attention, but because it's so simple and I think it's pretty effective for only having six tracks. I usually start most of my beats with chords and this time around I started with a diva preset called HS Ganymede. Ganymede? I don't know. But I started with this preset, which is a preset that I wouldn't normally use because It has some harmony on its own. Meaning that there's a couple notes happening there when I press just one key, which usually means that's kind of bad for trying to build your own chords. But I actually found it sounded pretty good when I started playing the chords. So I'm playing four chords for the intro. The first one being a D minor. But for the first three chords, I'm playing the fifth in the root note. So a D minor being D, F, A, and I'm playing A in the bass, the fifth. And then same thing when I go down to B flat minor. The F, which is the fifth, is in the bass. Up to C major. And then that pattern kind of changes a little bit where I play A. B minor 7, so no longer playing the 5th in the bass, this is the root of the chord, with the 7 on top. So then that chord progression becomes... And the first and last chord are actually really similar because I'm playing the root of this B flat minor and then going to a D minor but with the fifth in. So only one note changes. But you can hear how the chord changes pretty significantly. The next sound I used was a bass sound. So this is another preset, this one being from Repro 1. These are both plugins from UHE. Since I'm using a native instruments controller here, it's so much easier for me to navigate the library using the complete control A25. And when I'm trying to get inspired or trying to make a beat, it's really important that I can quickly get to some sounds that I'm looking for. So if I'm searching for a bass, that's really easy to do with this screen, these knobs, um, scroll through, find something. And because the collection is so huge, I was able to just jump into bass type instruments and then find something right away. Now with this bass line, I'm essentially following the root notes of each of the chords that we just went through. So going from a D to a G to a C to a B. But I kind of bounce around them to give it some movement. So you can see how instead of just being boring and playing I still landed on those root notes but added a little movement with other notes that are in this scale to make the bass line more interesting. So together the chords and the bass line sound like this. Since 
I played these in live, I would probably go in and fix a little something like making these a little more legato so they don't walk over each other. Much cleaner when they don't bleed over each other like that, especially for a bass line. Now let's talk about drums. I've been really into using Splice lately, not a sponsorship. I just wanted to have more access to different samples and I subscribed at the basic level and I get access to tons of samples if I'm feeling the need to be inspired. And this kit here is made up of some sounds from a couple different kicks, these EK kicks and snare sounds as well as this kit here, which I grabbed most of my hi-hat sounds from. A lot of good trap and hip hop sounds in this kit. So I combined all those samples to make this basic pattern. Most of the time I do include two kicks in my drum racks. I like to be able to bounce between them. I think it just gives more shape and groove to the beat. And also with the pattern, which could have been very basic like this. I replaced one of those beats with another like big echoey snare type sound. I think it just gives it a little more bounce. I think adding that extra little echoey snare sound makes it sound a little more interesting. And for hi-hats, which I've broken up into a separate drum rack. Now, the only reason I did this is because I was making the video and I wanted to show the MIDI on the screen for individually these drum sounds and also the hi-hats alone. But otherwise, if I wasn't making the video, I wouldn't put them in the same drum rack. And I've put hi-hat sounds on these three keys, which are really easy to find. And what I've done with them is put arpeggiators on them, which is how I can play the pattern by just holding down a key. So you can see using Ableton's arpeggiator here and the rate for this first one is 16th notes. That makes it a lot easier to play. And then on these next two keys, I have 32nd notes or stutters. Now the first two, the 16th and the 32nd notes, are the exact same sample at the same pitch, just at different rates. And the last one is also the same sample, but transposed down minus five semitones. This just gives me a few different options to play with and adds more variation to my sound, which I like. The last sound I have here is a vocal sample. Most of the time I have a sampler already loaded into my Ableton Live set and I will just go into samples and search vocal and go through whatever's in my library. The mind is to the sound. And that's the one I ended up landing on. So I dropped it into the sample and found an area of the clip where I could play basically a single note, but it still has some shape to it, as you can see, which means when I hold a note, it's not just playing like a stagnant, like if I just grabbed this small area here, it's actually going through the shape of the voice. If you notice it's looping back and forth, that's because I have the sustain mode set to back and forth. I also have the starting place a little further along than when it's gonna go back and loop towards. So that adds a little different variation in the attack and then when it ends up looping. So it's a little less obvious that it's the same sound looping back and forth. So I've got a bit of reverb on here and I'm sending it to some basic delay on my send. And the pattern is pretty simple. So as you 
can see, really simple but effective beat really only has five parts if you count the drums as a single part. Made from two presets, a vocal sample, and some splice samples. All right, so that's how I made that beat. It's probably one of my favorite beats that I've made in a while. And one of the reasons I stress so much about creating content and putting on social media for producers is because this beat got me over 1,000 to 2,000 followers on Instagram. It got me followers not only from when I posted it, from being on the Explore page and people finding it through hashtags, but then Native Instruments shared this beat and I gained a ton of new followers just from that reshare. And that means more people listening to my beats, more people checking out my work, which is ultimately what we wanna do. It's not just about, hey, check out my beats, check out my beats. Make some cool content, put it out there, let people share it and love it. So I would encourage you to do the same. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe for more electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.